What are you doing here? I thought you'd be at the Tonys. So what happens is, uh, well, I, I thought I'd better talk to you about this. We, we do, occasionally we do a little song and dance number at the start of the show and uh, uh, Chris here uh, very kindly puts on a little outfit and dances around and uh, the, the office has been flooded with fan mail because um, Chris apparently has got what the kids call pecs. <laughs> which is amazing is 50% men and 50% women which is kind of and that's just one letter from 50% of men not a lot a lot of people find uh, uh, Chris very attractive so uh, what I've decided to do in an effort to save his dignity is to raffle him off <laughs> But not for money, because that would be undignified. So what if we're going to raffle them off to someone who can provide a service to this show? For example, when it rains in LA, which it's threatening to do later this week, the, this ceiling uh, has a hole in it, which CBS doesn't seem to want to spend any money on to get fixed. <laughs> so if you're a roofing contractor and you're a lady who finds Chris attractive or a gay roofing contractor who... <laughs> You can have them for, for some spackle. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, you, you better go. You better, it's all right. It's just Chris. <laughs> now, look. I just have to tell you, we're not really raffling them off. So before you send your spackle in to CBS, <laughs> we're not really doing that. That would be legal. And... Uh, if there's one thing we do on this show, it's we follow the letter of the law. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if maybe you call me and... <laughs> maybe I'm here, maybe I'm not here, maybe I... Maybe I take the phone call, maybe I don't, I think you know what we are. <laughs> Craig Ferguson. Thank you. Enough. Thank you. Look, look, I said that. Didn't you recognize the late night talk show host sign? I went like this. That's enough. Thank you. <laughs> That's enough. Thank you. <laughs> they, you learn that at the learning annex to be a late night talk show host. The guy comes out and goes, first thing you have to do is say, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. a weekend. I am still recovering from the Tony Awards last night. Wasn't that great? <laughs> you didn't watch it, you're straight. Anyway, I... <laughs> it was a great show, though. Brett Michaels, though, he, from Poison, he got injured. He got hit by one of the sets. He walked away with a busted uh, lip, fractured nose and herpes. <laughs> One of these he had when he turned up. You know, I don't think you can blame that on a busted set. 
There's very big news today. Uh, I'm very excited about it. It's from the world of frogs. <laughs> If you're tuning in tonight to catch up on frog news, it's your lucky night. Now, by frogs, I don't mean French people. I mean... <laughs> no, I don't. I don't mean French people. I mean the little amphibians that go... Ribbit. You know, frogs. <laughs> frogs and French people are very different. Both delicious when covered in garlic. Appelez-moi, <laughs> Pierre. There's... No, a man... What happened is a, a man in India uh, discovered uh, a frog that changes colours and it's being worshipped as a god. I know. <laughs> it's true. Look at this. Look, look, look. Color changing frog worship as God in India. Now it's 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 written down, so that means it's true. <laughs> but then, <laughs> what the hell paper is that anyway? <laughs> and the newspaper article even even it has a picture of the frog. Can we see the the picture of that? <laughs> that's that's it. That's what was in there. That's not really a photograph, though, is it? It's just a drawing. Let me see that again. That's just a drawing of a frog. You can't prove that something exists just with a drawing. You might as well just draw something mystical. You could draw a unicorn and go, oh, look, that exists. You could draw a female orgasm and go, oh, look, that exists. <laughs> I'm kidding. I've heard that sound. Bah. Anyway, the colour... Bah. Bah. It's a joke. Knock it off. Hey, hey. Anyway, the colour change in flo flog... Flog? I thought you said it was a frog. No, I'm talking French now. It is a flog. A flog. Oui. Apparently, the colour change in frog was discovered in a flower bed in India. Now, hundreds of people are flocking to see it and asking it to perform miracles. I know. That's kind of quick, isn't it? You know, but India's a country of, you know, 500 million, half a billion people live in India. Some of them have got to be stupid, just by the odds. <laughs> half a billion! Some of them have got to be stupid. It's only fair. And what kind of miracles could a frog perform anyway? They, well, they have got the giant tongue that can lick things far away. <laughs> Wish I had that. I know what I'd use it for. Changing the channels on television, that's what I'd do. Hmm, let's see what Conan's doing. <laughs> Anyway, what I'm saying is that frogs change in colour. It isn't new. For example, the common tree frog, that changes from grey to green, which is not a big deal. It switches back and forth all the time. It's like Lindsay Lohan. But this frog in India... <laughs> this... <laughs> the frog in India changes colour so much they're calling it the rainbow frog, which I'm sure the frog's a little bit... No, I'm not so sure about this. It makes it sound a little effete. You know, I'm a frog, damn it. Get the hell off my lily pad. <laughs> I think I saw that frog at the Tonys last night. <laughs> anyway, sometimes the Indian frog's colour, it, it, it goes away and it becomes completely transparent. It's so skinny you can see its internal organs. It's like the animal worms. Worm? The animal worm? The animal world. It's like the animal world's version of uh, Kira Knightley or something. You can just see right through. <laughs> I think maybe the frog changes colour because it's high. It could have licked himself. Because you know how people say that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you, the, the, you, you can lick certain frogs and toads to get high. It doesn't work. It does, I've tried it. Trust me. <laughs> Did I lick a frog for hours? <laughs> Nothing happened, but the frog enjoyed it. Anyway, there. <laughs> Belly moi, Pierre. Anyway, there's only, there's only one creature you can get high by licking, and that is, of course, Amy Winehouse. <laughs> now, I... Uh, <laughs> I have never been to India, but I would love to go, because perhaps they would worship me as a god. <laughs> Why not? I'm every bit as entertaining as a translucent frog. <laughs> Oh, the Scottish guy, he's hilarious. <laughs> oh, I love it when he says Tootsie Fruitsie ice cream. I like it 
what he says. Oh, to mind you of anyone. By the way, I'd like to apologize to the entire nation of India for my ridiculously bad Indian accent, but it's the only accent I can do, and it's still less offensive than Scotty's accent from Star Trek, so I think we're fair. <laughs> But wait a minute, we didn't even make Star Trek. Yes, but you would have if you got the chance, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you know, there was a lot of Indian people uh, in Glasgow, in Scotland, where I grew up. A very, uh, there's a huge Indian community in, in Glasgow, and they have a very unusual accent. It's a Scottish Indian accent. They've got, they may take our lives, but they'll not take our curry. Aye. <laughs> it's very weird. It's true. Aye, oh, that's right. <laughs> the, first, the first delicious food, the first decent food I ever had in my life, actually, was at an, an Indian restaurant. Indian uh, food is very popular over there because it goes very well with beer. <laughs> and, and Indian curry is the most popular food in all of Britain, which is, is not hard to believe if you've tasted regular British food. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want more fried eggs, then? You want a fried egg? <laughs> <laughs> Want some beans on toast? <laughs> they ate beans one at a time to fit them in their tiny little mouths. <laughs> one bean. <laughs> mm, that's delicious. Anyone I haven't offended? Good, then we've got to the commercial break. Hey, hey! We'll be right back, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. Hang on a second. Hang on. Hang on. Hey, hey! When did I ask you to join that? When did I say, hey, he's mine. I studied at late night college for years. <laughs> Doing that. Oh, bye. Hey, hey. Oh, hey, you guy in the band. <laughs> no, you the man. <laughs> Do we have some music for that? Ha 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 ha! All right, um, you know, we usually have emails on the show, but we can't uh, tonight because we don't have time. Oh, wait a minute. We do have time! Do we have time for email? Yeah, do the thing, do the thing. Be careful what you eat, because I love that Bollywood musical stuff. That wasn't a Bollywood musical. There's no, no money spent on that. But if, if you get a chance, go and see a Bollywood... I saw a Bollywood musical once called Mr. India. And, uh, and in it, there's a, a lady dances around in a sari, and it starts to rain, and her sari gets very wet. <laughs> You'll be reaching for your rattlesnake cup when you watch that, I tell you. <laughs> Always keep a napkin nearby. <laughs> Don't try that with a real tiger, it could end up very, very badly. <laughs> oh, I've spilled some water on my mouth. Well, let's go to San Diego Zoo and see the tiger. <laughs> All right, let's see what the emails have got for us tonight, then. Uh, this is from uh, Dionel. Dionel in New York City. Um, <laughs> Dionel says, Dear Craig, do you have any tips from running away from the police? Uh, P.S. Don't read this out loud. <laughs> you shouldn't be running away from the police. The police are our friends. They're there to help you. And in, in no way do I endorse breaking the law. <laughs> Unless it involves spackle. <laughs> spackle. <laughs> Three pounds of spackle in a night you will never forget. <laughs> <laughs> this is from uh, uh, Brady in Pierre, South Dakota. Pierre? 
Uh, that's French. Uh, Brady says, Dear Craig, do you think you could outrun an ostrich? Perhaps. It would I get asked this a lot. A lot of people say to me, Craig, do you, could you outrun an ostrich? We're, we're concerned, Craig, because ostriches may be loose. <laughs> Well, uh, the, the thing is, I, I think certain ostriches I could run. A, a newborn baby ostrich, easy. <laughs> a dead ostrich. <laughs> but ostriches can go very fast. They can, they can run at up, upwards of 85 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, that's right, I made it up. <laughs> really? Well, why don't you go to Wikipedia and find out? Yes, because if it's on Wikipedia, Wikipedia, yes, Wikipedia. If it's on Wikipedia, then it's definitely true because on Wikipedia it says I play the harp. <laughs> I didn't know I played the harp. I feel such a fool for not studying better at harp lessons that I never took as a child. <laughs> Yes, I could outrun some ostriches, but not all of them. This is from <laughs> Timothy in Royston in Georgia. Timothy says, uh, who write your joke for you? <laughs> oh, no one write my joke for me. <laughs> who write your joke for you? Who write your email for you? This is from uh, Nelson in Sandusky, Ohio. I always loved that name for that town, Sandusky. It's a town you can be out of if you're in a western. I'm out of Sandusky. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the story I heard back in Sandusky. <laughs> um, Dear Craig, says Nelson, uh, do you belong to a real gym, a real gym where people actually work out, or one where people just stand around and stare at everyone else while pretending to work out? <laughs> I don't understand the question. Uh, <laughs> a gym? Uh, but if I was going to join a gym, I'd go, I'd go to a gym where you stand around and stare at everyone else. Because <laughs> a real gym where people actually work out sounds tiring. <laughs> and if you know anything about me in the show, you'll know that work is not something I rush to. <laughs> uh, all right, are we out of time? Yeah, we are. I'll just do one more. All right, this is from Maria in Hartford City in Indiana. Uh, Maria says, Dear Craig, have you ever considered swimming across the English Channel? Yes, thought about it many times. <laughs> Thinking about it now. <laughs> and I'm coming up with the answer I always come up with. Nah. <laughs> nah. No, no, I'm not going to do it. We'll take a break. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. Oh, no, no way. No way. No, no. Because I said, can we come back from the commercial break without music? And they're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> And then, even though we said, well, let's risk it, let's see, let's, let's see if we can deconstruct this thing even more. <laughs> and then we came back from the commercial break with no music, but yet the audience still feels the need to applaud. <laughs> even although nothing had happened. <laughs> nothing at all had occurred. But why else are we here? You're here because I have plans. <laughs> Tonight I hunt the greatest game of all, man. <laughs> you have 30 seconds. <laughs> My first guest tonight is a great big movie star. He's about, no, he's bigger, even bigger than that. <laughs> no, he's about that, I don't know. He's bigger than Tom Cruise, who's about that size. He 
You're going to have to narrow it down, Craig. He's bigger than Tom Cruise. Well, most of us over the age of 12 are bigger than Tom Cruise. At what point? <laughs> I don't know. I liked it better when we had music. Anyway, <laughs> he's in an HBO film, very good film, uh, called Taking Chance, which is available on DVD now. Please welcome the very lovely Kevin Bacon, everybody. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Well, how lovely to see you. Very nice to be seen. Well, it's good to see you, and how may I say how tall you look this evening? Very <laughs> impressive. It's the lifts. Uh, uh, hi, I, uh, I uh, this movie, Taking Chance, was on HBO a while back, and I saw the posters up for it around town, and I got a phone call. Do you, it's a very patriotic film, uh, moving, but patriotic, right? Uh, you know that, probably, because you're in it. Yeah. But, the, uh, <laughs> but I got a phone call from uh, Sheila Casey. Do you know who Sheila Casey is? Mm, no. Sheila Casey is married to a gentleman called George Casey, who's a general in the United States Army. He's the chief of staff of the United States Army. And Sheila Casey and George Casey went to a, a screening of this. Mm -hmm. And they yeah, said it right. was fantastic. They said it was absolutely fantastic. And I thought, if the chief of staff of the US Army <laughs> thinks that your patriotic army movie is good, it's probably pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So well, congratulations on that. That's fantastic. What is the... Uh, what is the story of this? Tell the folks. This is about a true story about a guy named Lieutenant Colonel Mike Strobel, who actually wrote a, uh, an article that uh, the movie was based on and then ended up uh, co-writing the script. And he volunteered for escort duty, which is the duty of uh, returning the remains of fallen um, soldiers, Marines, the Air Force, military, uh, back to their final resting place. Right. And he um, had this experience taking um, this, this, uh, this, this young kid, uh, Private First Class uh, Chance Phelps, back to his hometown in um, in in Wyoming, and and uh, just you know, I just had this amazing experience, and and wrote this story, and uh, HBO picked it up and turned it into a film. And, it's uh, very yeah, it's 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 a difficult uh, it's a difficult subject for a, for a lot of people, but I, but I feel a necessary one. Uh, we didn't uh, see any of that during the, a lot of the Iraq conflict, did we? And of course, it was a reality of what was going on. Yeah, well, I think it, what's interesting about the movie is that um, about probably a month or so after the film came out, the policy of not photographing flag-draped um, coffins coming back from uh, any war was changed. And uh, it was a national policy that had been in place, I think, since 1991. Um, and I thought to myself, gosh, do we have anything to do with that? I mean, that, that could be really amazing. And it turns out uh, uh, the Secretary of Defense actually came out and said that Part of the reason why they, they lifted the ban was uh, because of the film. So wow. to actually do be in something that has, you know... Made you a know, difference. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't think that Tremors... Yeah, congratulations. You know, that is something. Are you... Uh, are you a, are you a very are you a very uh, I, I'm sure, I'm sure you are very patriotic. Are you very involved with the military? Did you get involved with stuff like that, or did it did this come up to you when you when you got did the movie? No, I played I've played a couple of Marines, um, but uh, but but no, I mean just uh, have you ever been on a USO tour? Uh, I never have. No, you know you want to do that. I can yeah. fix you up there if yeah. you want. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Would, I would like to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We've 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 certainly talked about it, and I've made some um, a oh, few visits. I can visits. give you a number. Actually, <laughs> we can get you a number. I can right. get you a number Good. tonight. Excellent. I can get you in the Middle East in about two weeks, if you want. <laughs> Bingo. Uh, no, I'm, I'm actually going out to uh, Kosovo. Uh, All right. Yeah, yeah, in, in a couple of weeks' time. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that Kosovo is in no way dangerous. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't know why. <laughs> uh. Find out when you get there. I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah. Here, by the way, did you hear uh, that they're remaking Footloose? It's a musical. I did hear that. Are you upset in any way? No. Why would I be upset? Well, because you're the footloose guy with the loose foot. Well, I mean... Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, the only thing that was a little strange is, like, you know, uh, I don't wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, and see a guy who would be in a movie that it was time to remake. Let's put it that way. Oh, it was like just, yes, just the idea me. that you're actually in something that. But you know, truth is, the movies I don't know what 25 years old or. What, why do they keep remaking movies, Kevin? Why? Why? You're in Hollywood. You're connected in show business. Yeah. Why? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that uh, you know, there's there's certain kind of thematic stories that need to be told again, and people like to they like a sort of you know brand familiarity. Wouldn't that be? be oh, it? I guess. Yeah. All right. Then you know what I think they should you should do Tarzan. Tarzan. Yeah. <laughs> 
don't know. Uh... I like Tarzan. Yeah. Tarzan, uh, the old timey Tarzan when he, you know, he lived in the hut, and uh, but the hut was kind of modern looking. Yeah. You know, it was like really like yeah, a okay. house, but made of uh, and branches. like a microwave and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. You, you'd be great at that. Are you really think yeah, so? Yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, you, do you know about this website that you're on? Because I wanted to see if I was on it. They were telling me about it earlier. That? that men who look like old lesbians yeah, website. Have you seen yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, here's the thing. I mean, how many? How many people admit to actually Googling themselves? Oh, yeah. No, none of the, no, Nobody's yeah. even raising their hand. I yeah, just yeah. don't believe that. I know. Most people have mastered Googled in their lives. Right. And <laughs> so in order to avoid the embarrassment of that, I signed myself up for Google Alerts. Which oh, you, yeah, you, a convenient you, way to Google yeah. yourself without typing right. your name. And that way you just get a little taste every day they send you and they say what's being said about you or written about you online. And that way you can kind of see, you don't want to click on it because it, it kind of goes, Kevin Bacon isn't dot 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 and then yeah. you don't click on that because you know that it's probably not going to go into a good it, place it's not going to get i'm just kidding he's he should play tarzan in the new exactly movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly uh so that one i just couldn't resist men who look like old lesbians.com yeah, yeah. first off i mean how fabulous is it I mean, that's one of the great things about the internet, that you can actually have a website that's so Dedicated. specific. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know? <laughs> Who else was on it? I thought I would be on, because I think I look a bit like Liza Minnelli, who, of course, is not a lesbian, so <laughs> right there. That... I didn't think you have to look like a famous lesbian. Oh. You just have to look like an old lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh... and... And do you, have any, do you have any tips for the folks at home if they want to look like old lesbians? Uh... <laughs> They can maybe do. <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, right. Just uh, lean a, lead a clean lifestyle. And, yeah, yeah. You know. right. And uh, enjoy. The other things uh, back in New York with uh, you and your lovely wife. Didn't she get good. her star on the. She did today. Oh, really? She got her star on the wall. Yeah, Hollywood the, walk. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, they said, uh, we got great news because uh, we're actually going to put you right next to Kevin's. Oh, right, so your, your stars are next to each other? Next to each other, yeah. I don't know. She didn't seem all that thrilled about that idea. I mean, I think she was kind of like, oh, great, yeah, you know, I'm, you know, and I, you know, I got to be on his, next to his star. But anyway, she was okay about it. I mean, the good news is, is that we don't actually plan on uh, being buried, so... You don't get buried under your star. No, you don't. That's, no. The, they don't put you That's true. I realize that. Yeah. But... This will kind of become a Hollywood tombstone for us, where we'll sort of always be together, uh, you know, in perpetuity. You want a Hollywood tombstone? <laughs> Present a late-night talk show right there. <laughs> well, you must have one. You, uh, this is it. This is, my, <laughs> this is my little cave of the eternal. This is my little tomb. But do you, have, you have, must have a star, right? Do you have a star? A on star? It? Not, are you crazy? <laughs> I don't even... I'm not on the guest list at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Star in Hollywood Boulevard? Are you nuts? What the hell's wrong with you? You've been in show business too long. You think everybody's in... How long have you been in this game? Since you were two? Uh, well, the first movie I did was Animal House. That was, I think, 30 years ago. Wow, is, is that 30 years ago? Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, yeah, I was about 19 at the time. And uh, it was great. Great. That looked like it might have been a fun uh, time. Well, you know, fun. it was okay, except that I was kind of a loser on the set because the, the, the guys who were in the animal house were really the cool ones. Right. And they all hung out together. And then uh, those of us who weren't in the animal house, um, they sort of, uh, you know, didn't really want to hang out with us. So there were a lot of parties that I wasn't invited to and stuff like that. But other than that, it was okay. No, it's all right. No, really. I'm over it. Wait, 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 wait. I'm over it. It's 30 years wait. ago. Don't awe him. He just got his star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame and next to his wife's star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Oh, by the way, um, did you really lose a lot of money in that Madoff thing? Did that really happen? I read about that in the... Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you should be in that Footloose remake then. <laughs> ah. Tarzan, there's your way out. Tarzan. Tarzan. Oh, oh. Related to the deceased son? Uh, yes, sir. He's my brother. Present.
But tell her how exciting was that? There was music, applause, music, applause. Even although nothing had happened. <laughs> My next guest is a Hall of Famer football star. His uh, new show is uh, Fourth and Long on Mondays on Spike TV. Take a look at this. As a receiver, you want to attack. You know, the best part about being in this competition is Michael Irvin, he can't help himself but to coach, and you can just see the fire behind his eyes. If I see hands, oh, feel me hands again. You're not the karate kid. I don't want to see. That's junk. That's in a book somebody wrote, and the person who wrote it never played the game. Make him know you're here. You, come on, man. I'm a bit scared. <laughs> I'm doing well. Doing I haven't well. seen you since the Miami Super Bowl. Yeah, we had fun. We had a little fun, although you were concerned that day, as I recall, because it was you were going to find out that weekend if you made it into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I was a bit concerned since yeah. I had missed already twice in a row. I was apparently a there had been some trouble in your past. They were a little concerned about yeah, like you had some getting fun. In, yeah, getting caught in a hotel room with some women and drugs kind of kept me out. Yes, I don't know why. But that's not football. That's not football. That's, that's a hobby. Players gotta have a hobby, Michael. That's what I tried to tell yeah, Bill. Yeah, this should, I'm trying to keep an interest <laughs> off the field. Yeah, it, no, no, it didn't work. No, it but you're, you're in now, yeah. Yeah, it worked out. They finally let, got me in. No, yeah. no, it's fantastic. And yeah, you had so. a fantastically big fur coat on, as I remember, in Miami. <laughs> Did I have a fur coat on? I in think my you head? had it around you. Yeah, it was over your shoulders in a way that white guys can only dream of. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's true, man. It's true. Usually in Miami, that's where you wear it, just hanging over oh, your shoulders. Oh, it's fantastic. You know, yeah. I was like, the only time you see a white guy with a, a, a coat over his shoulders like that is if he's a villain in a movie. You know, I was like, ah, yes, ready my jet. But, you know, you can't do it. I, I, I never noticed yeah. that. No, I never noticed true. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, listen, tell me about the show. It's, uh, it's about you, you're teaching people how to play football? Well, they already know how to play. I'm okay. giving them the tools that it takes to make it in the NFL. You know, mm. these guys, they have talent, but sometimes guys get in the league and they don't have enough for the tools that it takes to make it. And I'm trying to give them those tools, take a long shot and make it, see if I can turn him into a superstar in the NFL. And I think it's a, just, just a fascinating show. Yeah. Well, no, no, do you eliminate one a week? Is it like American Idol? Yeah. That kind one of thing? a week, you eliminate one a week. Yeah, but but, but no, nobody gets to vote on it. It's not like, oh, I think he's a really cute football player. There's none of that, right? No, <laughs> <laughs> no I don't think cute is one of the requirements <laughs> So, I don't know. So we stayed away from that. And, <laughs> and, and what about the other stuff that you, that, that, that they might require? You know, the hotel room, the you know, the girls. The uh... well, you know what? It's funny because I did bring in uh, Thomas Hollywood Henderson. Hollywood played for the Cowboys right. uh, a lot of years ago, and he got in a lot of situations similar to mine. Well, so I thought I'd bring him in to kind of discuss it with the guys and teach those guys about football's great on the it. field, yeah. but try to stay away from that stuff off the field. I think it's can. difficult, though, when you get a young man who's full of energy yeah. and testosterone and you give him millions and millions of dollars and acclaim and anything you want and then say, now go home, Junior. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I, do you know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. Absolutely, <laughs> trust That's me. That's what I'm saying. Now, and you come from a, you come from a very large family. Big family. I'm sure, yeah. How many kids in your There's family? Seventeen of us. I got sixteen oh. children. Don't you do that. That's rude. <laughs> Talk about my mom and dad. Yeah, like that. don't you do the man. That's his family. That's rude. <laughs> Seventeen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wow. Cool. So you understood when I got caught in a hotel room. Yeah, you know, I, you were just trying to get a rest. Yeah. yeah. I, was... <laughs> I just want a room I can call my own with two girls. I, that's all I want. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, right. no, it's they just to get a little peace way. and quiet. Now, do you all uh, keep in touch, family? Oh, yeah, union? absolutely. Yeah, we, we still talk. We're close family, and that's a good thing. I mean, when you, you're that close, you grew up in a little house, and everybody kind of slept on, around, and on top of one another, you remain close throughout. So, yeah, we're close family. Is, do you think that's how you get used to sleeping around and on top of people? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't mean that. Do you know, 
I, I know, I'm, I'm sorry. That was, right right that we that. I said, that was rude. <laughs> <laughs> what about the... Uh, do I you think that makes you competitive, though, with all these siblings? Like. I know, I'm kidding. <laughs> but all these people, do you think that makes you competitive, having all these kids, you have to, you know... Well, it, to, to some degree, it does make you competitive, but I think the big part of it is it teaches you how to get along with everybody. Now, I am fortunate enough to win championships everywhere I play football, and I think... I like to think that that's because of the big family and learning how to deal with a lot of people. Yeah. What What, what about uh, about the other sports? Do you watch other sports on? TV? Oh yeah, I love basketball. Basketball. Love basketball well, you'd be baseball. very happy right now. Yeah. Yeah, I love the Lakers. Like, like yeah, games. you like Lakers? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I live in LA, so I don't care about them. Why not? <laughs> People in L.A. don't care about the Lakers. It's like people in Manchester don't go to see Manchester United. It's all people from out of town. It's like, yeah, they must be from out of town. They're going to see the Lakers. Or the people who live in town, they go and see the Clippers. Oh, really? No, but that's the only place I can get tickets. <laughs> I could only get tickets for the Clippers. I'm 12.30 on CBS. You're 11.30 on CBS, you get the Lakers. 12.30, you get the Clippers. You see what I'm saying? Okay, I got it. I'll talk to your boss for yeah, you see no. if he can. I thought... Okay. <laughs> he, he doesn't know who I am, is what I'm saying. <laughs> He'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about, Michael. I never heard of a guy. I believe he knows no, no. who you so are. So you like the basketball? What else do you watch on the TV then? Do you watch, uh, do you enjoy uh, Project Runway? I imagine you'd probably enjoy that, Project Runway. Uh, no, no, I haven't watched much of Project watch? Runway. Oh, it's awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah. How, how, what, you like Project Runway? It's my favorite TV show, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I like watching you. Yeah. Good luck with the show. It, it, it really does sound fascinating. The lovely Michael Irvin, everybody, we'll be right back. What did we learn on the show tonight, Greg? That's the least convincing cat meow I've ever heard in my life. I have a dog that could do a better cat meow than that. I'm kidding. It's, of course, completely authentic. And that was a real cat moving its head. It's a highly trained cat to train to look like it stays very still and then its head moves. It's a drawing of a cat. What did we learn on the show tonight? We learned that, you know, sometimes if you're in the NFL, you want to get in the Hall of Fame, you know, you might want to... <laughs> actually, you might want to not, actually, and... Uh... Also, we like, oh yeah, we were looking at the Wikipedia tonight, and apparently the, uh, the ostrich can run at 45 miles an hour, not 85 miles an hour, because nobody at Wikipedia apparently has met an ostrich that runs at the proper ostrich speed. <laughs> like, all the Wikipedia guys going, well, I had a very interesting vacation. What did you learn for our great journal when you were away? Well, I met an ostrich. Really? How fast was it traveling? 45 miles per hour. Really? I thought they ran faster. Not this ostrich, it was slow. <laughs> Perhaps he could have run faster, but he was carrying his groceries. <laughs> oh, we talked about that rainbow frog as well. I, uh, we, we saw the, 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 uh, the frog that's completely uninteresting. <laughs> I actually am interested in that frog. I think a frog that can change colours like that is something that Cirque du Soleil want to get going with. <laughs> because I know they've got this thing of, you know, well, we don't use animals on our, you know, they just have French Canadians. And they... <laughs> they do. That's how Cirque du Soleil... It's all French Canadians, then you know. Oh, they're mocking you. <laughs> they're mocking you with their bending and stretching. Good night, everybody.